In those days, that was in the 80s, we had to learn to program. So there was no computer archaeology courses at that stage. So the, the, the nice thing I think about my PhD is that it com it's completely in computer science, so I'm not actually in like um, connection with the, with the archaeologists anymore, but like I try to keep in touch, but it's not like part of it. So I'm really in a research group where we're doing only deep learning. And, but I came, fortunately, I think the great thing about my physics background was that it made me confident that I could learn digital tools and techniques and I could do computational and quantitative things. There was never any kind of intimidation that this wasn't going to be for me. I went back to school for my master's at Ryerson and I did a virtual reconstruction of a temple in Egypt in a, a little, so a little uh, regional temple uh, in El Hiba. It basically needed a way of making my PhD marketable <laughs> um, in, a, in a way and very few people study glass beads or care much about glass beads so um, going into digital archaeology was interesting anyway and, and was also a way of, of making it a bit more uh, interesting to other people I guess. <laughs> so I'm a trained archaeologist but in the 1990s it was the time when information technology really made its way and so I somehow learned, teach myself uh, on excavations. I made CAD, GIS for, for my work. And so I somehow collected the skills that an engineering department who was looking for an archaeologist um, to somehow teach all this stuff to the students. I, so I, do, I did a degree in computer science, my undergraduate degree, and I was very interested in the history of computation, which is code breaking. Uh, Bletchley Park, um, the Lorenz cipher, and when I was looking into decipherment, I had this realization that there are ancient languages that have never been deciphered. People wrote years ago. And I had a prof who asked us in her Etruscology class to go out on Alta Vista and find what we could find about the Etruscans. When I studied that, I sort of bumped into GIS, which was uh, very new thing at the time, and I thought it would be really cool to do all the kind of things that geographers do using a GIS. I took one GIS course with Undine Lieberwirt in uh, Berlin when I was a student, and then um, I went with, on an excavation with her, and we did like 3D, mo um, not modeling, but 3D uh, laser scanning of stuff, and we did like different methods, photogrammetry to, to compare, and I found it really interesting. and. Later on, we got a job with Undina doing GIS and databases. So um, that really took me in that direction. I really liked it and I continued and I did my master's thesis in GIS and geostatistics. So yeah, that was my way. And I really... So I started off um, kind of coming from an archaeological background. And I think a lot of the um, data that we collect in archaeology now is kind of born digital. And I like playing with things like laser scans and photogrammetry data and taking them through more creative practices to tell stories about the past. A combination of things. I sort of got into it by learning how to use ArcGIS uh, and then started using Python tools to coordinate those GIS tools and then ended up at program now mainly in Python. I'd say that yeah, my background is in uh, archaeology and I've been fascinating initially by using photogrammetry and stuff like that and working out from there. Uh, GIS and now I'm more focused on how to how to use edge-based modeling in my in my research questions. And I went and visit Biosha project in uh, Biosha in Greece, and I saw a guy that was playing around with the different reconstruction of the settlement in the past, and I asked him what it was, and it was GIS that it was in the. Uh, 1997. So I got attracted by it, and I decided that I will uh, probably follow this path. And but basically, the process of being involved in working with a fairly new for archaeology technology at the time, really having a lot of problems early on, got me to be really self-reliant and start to teach myself how to engage with the data. 